I've been looking into health now for nearly 30 years. In 2019, I came across a very interesting book called What Really Makes You Ill, Why Everything You Thought You Knew About Disease Is Wrong, and that's written by Dawn Lester and David Parker. And in that book, they said, after 10 years of research, that you can count on one hand the real number of ways you actually get ill. Not hundreds and not thousands, but a handful. And one of those ways was from electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic frequencies, or as we see them written more commonly, EMR and EMF. And these are the signals, the radiation that's coming from electronic devices, such as mobile phones, tablets, laptops, computers, mobile phone cell towers, routers for your Wi-Fi, and this includes the public service vehicles that contain them, like boats, buses, trains, and airplanes, and public buildings, electric cars, which have massive amounts of electromagnetic radiation coming from them with their large motors, smart meters, baby monitors, and ladies, if you're getting ultrasounds done of your baby, please be aware that you are exposing both yourself and your unborn to levels of ultrasound radiation. And in many ways, the little ones are harmed more, I think because of their smaller surface area to volume ratios. So applying a little common sense, in order for us to thrive, it would make sense to focus on two things. Number one, limiting our exposure wherever possible. And number two, protecting ourselves from the times where we can't limit our exposure. In my ongoing research, I have found that the top symptoms related to electromagnetic radiation poisoning are anxiety, depression, fatigue and low energy, sleep trouble and insomnia, headaches and migraines, brain fog and difficulty concentrating, and skin rashes, itches and skin tingling. If you're interested in learning more about this and what you can do about it, we've put together a web page for you that has a lot of information, videos, and downloadable research papers that you can read and study. All you have to do is visit theprinciples.co.uk forward slash EMR. One of the real challenges with electromagnetic radiation and frequencies is that really it is everywhere unless you're out in nature away from the cities and the cell towers. It's silent, it's invisible, and yet it does great damage to our bodies. It's a tremendous insult to our body. Now, if you want to see a visual of how prevalent it is, if you've got your mobile phone handy, and depending on your location, this will vary, but look at your phone, and if you have the ability to make a phone call, in other words, it has phone signal, then it's emitting electromagnetic radiation and it's receiving that from a local cell tower. And if you're in a place where there's no signal when your phone's turned on, it will boost the amount of radiation it's producing as it tries to hunt down a signal. If you turn on the Bluetooth section and you can see whether you're connected to any Bluetooth or it has the ability to connect to any Bluetooth devices nearby. And if you're wearing earpods, please do be aware that you're bathing your brain in electromagnetic radiation right now. And finally, have a look at the Wi-Fi section on your phone. If you see any Wi-Fi routers that it can log onto, you'll see just how much electromagnetic radiation that is all around your body right now. Certainly in the cities, blocks of flats and close together houses, and offices, you can see a huge number of these. Over 15 years ago, scientists were becoming increasingly concerned about this and starting to warn us. In research in 1985, 0.06% of the people were electrosensitive. That was from the National Encyclopedia of Sweden, 1991. Just 10 years later, it had grown to 1.5%, and that was in Austria, Leitgeb N. A. Al, 1995 to 2005. In 2004, it had grown to 11% of people were now electrosensitive, and that was in England, Fox E, 2004. In 2017, it was 50%, and that number was extrapolated to 50% by Halberg and Oberfield in 2006. And that was published in PubMed, and there'll be a link on that webpage I told you about where you can go and look at that. And the article was a letter to the editor, will we all become electrosensitive? So it's clear that more and more people are becoming electrosensitive. Now, why is that, you might ask? Could it be because of the increasing number of devices, the increasing number of cell towers and hotspots, and the new phone system that starts with a five? And some people are electro-hypersensitive, where they've got to the point where it's almost impossible for them to be out and to be exposed to anything, and they have to live a very uncomfortable and very sheltered life. One of the problems we face 
is that these devices are very much a part of our lives now. Is it possible to work and live without the devices? Well, of course it is. But it's not very convenient, is it? I mean, it might be that we just have to stay in touch with family or friends or things we have to do for work. Or maybe we just need to use the map app so that we can find a way from A to B. As you can see, this is a very serious problem and it's getting worse, not better. So the question is, what can you do about it? Well, if you do your research, you'll find there's all sorts of possible solutions. And depending on your level of sensitivity, you may have to resort to building a Faraday type cage in your home using things like shungite, special paints in the rooms, or you can have a look at what we do and what we recommend to our tribe. You have to find a way to protect yourself from harm with products that actually work. I would suggest you go looking for products that people are saying positive things about. I would look for products that have research to back up the claims. I would look for things that are small and convenient and long lasting and maintenance free and portable or largely portable so that you can transfer them from one device to another when, for example, you change your phone. I would also look for things that offered increasing areas of protection like personal protection or maybe building wide protection. Over a period of time, and in our research, we decided to settle on using the products from Biophotonic. They offer three styles of protection. They have a device level protection, which is a little square, and that's for use on your mobile phone, as an example, and I put it in the case behind the phone. It's for use on tablets, routers, smart devices like fridges, and especially smart meters, baby monitors, and other devices that emit electromagnetic radiation. They have personal level protection with the crystal shield. This effectively puts a protective field around the body. And I'll tell you a little story about this. I do a lot of work in Manchester, which is a large city in the northwest of England. And I was noticing that I was getting progressively more uncomfortable in town, especially when I was working near the new large cell phone towers with the large power supplies on them. And I was finding that I was getting brain fog. I was also getting a tingling on my skin which reminded me of when I'd had the unfortunate experience of being in some computer data centers. In addition, I was also getting really unpleasant pulsing headaches and experiencing nausea. The next time I went to Manchester, I had my crystal shield in my card wallet in my pocket, and I hadn't noticed until later in the afternoon that I didn't have any of my usual discomfort. There were no pulsing headaches, no tingly skin, no nausea and no brain fog. And it was such a nice feeling to realize that. So much so that unlike normally where I'd get out of town as fast as I could so I could get some relief, I stayed in town later on that day and went around to see some friends I hadn't seen in a while. And that continued to be the case, visit after visit. What interested me more was the day I went to Manchester without taking my card wallet so the crystal shield wasn't with me, you guessed it, all those symptoms came back. So I made sure from then on, I always have that in my pocket, no matter where I'm going, and I've never had a return to those symptoms. And finally, they have an area level protection with the biophotonic wave. This is a really interesting device that is a combination of various technologies, protects an area that is 50 meters square. So it goes up and outwards through walls, etc., And it protects a whole house or office or workshop, even small hotels. And if you were in larger places, you could place them in strategic locations in the building to get maximum coverage. It'd also be a great thing for schools and public transport to have them in the buses to counteract the effects of the Wi-Fi for all the passengers on there. I decided to take this in the car with me when we go on long drives and I arrive feeling much more refreshed and relaxed than I used to. And yes, I have tested it by going back on the same drives without and I noticed that I'm not as refreshed and I do feel more tired. So now you know what we do and you can do the same thing too if you want. Just pop along to theprinciples.co.uk forward slash EMR and you can read about it. And if you decide to avail yourself of the products, there's an affiliate link on there that you can use. So I have some pretty direct questions to ask of you, if I may, because this is a very serious subject and I am absolutely committed to helping people see what the problem is and to protect themselves from it. What price do you place on your health? You see, for me, I value my health a lot because it allows me to experience my life fully and do all the things I want to do. We all see people spending hundreds or even a thousand pounds or more buying the latest mobile phone. The same for tablets, the same for smart devices, the same for laptops. 
I see people with all sorts of very big, strong, powerful routers in their house so they can get the best Wi-Fi everywhere with little knowledge that they're really harming themselves unless they're protecting themselves properly. Now, certainly the photonic square and the photonic shield are very inexpensive. They require no maintenance and as long as you look after them and don't put them through the wash in your jeans or anything like that, they should last you a long time. For me, it's a very small price to pay to maintain my health. And regardless of whether you buy the Biophotonics products or not, may I encourage you please that this is a very serious problem. It's getting far bigger and far worse, not better. So please do your research, do your digging, and then come up with solutions where you can protect yourself and your loved ones. And then we can have the convenience that these devices bring and still enjoy our health and our lives. <laughs>